high yield savings accounts are paying over 4% right now. That sounds like a great deal. It sounds like lots of free money, right? However, it may not be all that great. Here's why. Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to Uncashflow, where I help you become a master of your own cash flow. Now let's get started. So Aaron from the YouTube channel, Aaron Talks Money, made a video a few months ago talking about this whole problem of Americans holding record high levels of cash. And I watched her video and I wanted to give my thoughts on this whole ordeal, especially since things have changed somewhat drastically in just a few months. Is it true? Are Americans holding record high levels of cash? Well, I'll let you decide that for yourself, but here's something that supports that argument. This shows that the total value of money market funds, the cash assets, are over $5 trillion. Money market funds are basically cash equivalents, so it's kind of the same thing as saying people holding cash. And if you look at this chart, you can see that the total assets for money market funds has doubled in just a few years. So it does seem that money market funds being over $5 trillion and they've doubled it in a few years that Americans are definitely holding record levels of cash. Now, while I personally think that you can personally hold too much cash, there is something that I think that you cannot have too much of, and that is the number of likes on this video. And in fact, every video of mine. If you're feeling generous, please take one quick second and hit the like button on this video. It really does help me out and I would really appreciate that. Okay, but seriously, let's get on to the problem with holding too much cash. And in fact, I have a few problems that I want to mention here. The first one is the one that most people talk about because it is very detrimental to holding cash. And that of course is inflation. Inflation is a normal part of our monetary system because if you keep printing money, it is going to become worth less and less and less. However, we generally want that inflation rate to stay relatively low around two or 3%. But as we have seen in the past few years, inflation has been a lot higher than what we are used to. And when that happens, your money becomes worth less and less and it compounds in a negative direction. Therefore, you can purchase fewer goods and services with that same amount of money. If you are holding too much cash and you might be getting, let's say 4% in your high yield savings account. However, if inflation is higher than that, then you are still losing in real terms. That means you are getting negative returns, negative returns after inflation, because what really matters is the returns that you get after inflation on an after inflation basis. Ideally, if you're saying that you're going to get 10% returns and inflation is 2%, then you're really getting 8% return after inflation is accounted for in that scenario. And here's some recent data on the inflation rate. As the most recent data that I pulled up says that the inflation rate was an average of 6.4% annualized. And that was actually 10.1% for food. And I wanted to bring up that category because that's the one that you hear most people complaining about, including myself. If inflation was an average of 6.4% and you were getting 4% in your high yield savings account, then you are still losing value when it comes to your cash holdings. But inflation isn't the only culprit. Another culprit is simply opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of what that cash could have become, especially over the long run, if you would have invested it in a different asset rather than holding it as cash. For example, if you would have had that cash invested in stocks, maybe in real estate, or even in bonds, it might have returned you a lot higher than what you would have gotten if you just kept it in cash, earning maybe 4% currently. If you look back at historical data, usually the longer time that you have in the market, the higher return that you're going to have over inflation. You're usually going to get a higher after inflation return by investing in the long run over in stocks, for example, in a broad market index fund. If you want to build wealth, you're going to have to accept some kind of volatility or some kind of risk when it comes to your money. If you accept no risk, which is actually impossible, you are just taking on a different form of risk when you just leave your money in cash, then it's going to be very difficult for you to gain wealth as inflation keeps compounding in a negative direction on the money that you're holding. And it's not only that, if you're holding too much cash and cash becomes a large percentage of your net worth, then you're going to have a weird asset allocation. It might be a little bit off. Now, one thing to note as a general rule of thumb, the lower amount of total assets you have, the lower total net worth that you have, probably the higher amount of cash that you are going to need. For example, if you only have a $10,000 net worth, then it might make sense for you to have 50% of that in cash, you know, $5,000 as an emergency fund. However, if you go ahead and change that and you have a $1 million net worth, it usually does not make sense for you in almost any circumstance to have $500,000 of cash or 50% of your net worth 
in cash. And one more problem I do want to mention here when it comes to holding too much cash is when it comes to debt. If you have existing debt that is higher than the rate that you can expect to earn by keeping your cash, then that might present a problem for you, especially if that is significantly higher or a variable interest rate debt. Let's say you have a credit card and you're carrying a balance every single month and that credit card is at a 20% interest rate and you're holding a record level of cash for yourself in a savings account earning 4% while well, you're losing out big time by having more money in cash rather than paying off that high interest rate debt, even a debt that's you know half that, 10%. You'd still be losing out a lot if you're holding too much cash rather than paying off that higher interest debt. Now, I don't want to be just a Debbie Downey here and only present problems with holding too much cash. I want to give you a solution, a solution that I think is appropriate for many people that are you know, looking to achieve financial independence, early retirement, or people who just want to be really good with their money. But before I get into that, I want to know from you in the comments below, what is your cash position looking like right now? How much cash do you have maybe as a percentage of your net worth? Is it higher than normal? Is it lower than normal? Or is it pretty much the same that you pretty much always have had. Please let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear what you have to say. And now for that solution I have for you, this is what I do or how I think about it when it comes to holding cash as a percentage of my net worth. I personally right now have less than 2% of my total net worth in cash or cash equivalents. And that's pretty much on track with what I have always had. And the reason for that is the market situation isn't really going to dictate how much I'm going to be holding in cash. That's because I think that the only amount of money that you need to have in cash or cash equivalents is the money that is set aside for pretty much your emergency fund. Once you have your emergency funds funded, I don't think you really need to hold any more money than that in cash. I would rather have all of my idle cash invested as much as possible so that I could possibly avoid you know, having inflation eat away at it, possibly avoid losing out on too much opportunity cost and all those other factors that I mentioned. And just keep in mind, I personally might have a higher risk tolerance. So this is all just my opinion and my personal preferences. You might need a larger amount of cash and that's perfectly okay. No matter how much cash you choose to hold on to, the most important thing is that you are able to sleep at night. But here's another note when it comes to your emergency fund. The emergency fund is gonna be different depending on who you are and what your lifestyle is. For example, someone who holds lots of rental properties is probably gonna need need emergency funds for each of those rental properties. Someone who is a homeowner is probably going to need a larger amount of emergency fund than someone, let's say, that is a renter because they have a lot more unexpected expenses, whereas a renter has a very predictable amount of expenses. Now, if you want some more background on this whole Americans holding record levels of cash, I highly suggest that you check out Erin's video. Okay, her video is going to pop up right on the screen right after I get off the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Zach from OnCashFlow.com and I hope to see you next time. The best thing that you can do is hold a number of cash. It's good. It's the most, the, but we're...